Welcome back to SiliconANGLE TV, live broadcasting from IBM Storage Edge 2012. I'm John MacArthur, president of Walden Technology Partners, and I'm here with David Floyer, co-founder of uh, Wikibon. Uh, we're on SiliconANGLE TV talking to uh, uh, today, right now, with Jason McGee, IBM Distinguished uh, Engineer and Chief Architect of WebSphere Cloud Computing. So welcome, uh, thanks for joining us yeah, today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, so um, you just came off the uh, main tent presentation. Can you give us a quick synopsis of uh, what you discussed there? Sure, sure. So uh, I was talking about uh, our peer systems family, a new set of integrated systems where we've tried to take uh, uh, infrastructure, compute storage and network, and combine it with uh, management and middleware to build integrated systems that are uh, really easy for customers to use. David, you were at the launch uh, of, uh, of uh, Pure Systems. Uh, uh, what's your uh, sort of assessment of uh, IBM? I was at the launch and I was at the presentation. Uh, it was an excellent presentation. Uh, I particularly like the, uh, the time lapse uh, photography, uh, yeah. collapsing four hours down to, uh, what was it, 90 seconds? 90 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> that was a very effective way of doing it uh, yeah. on that. So, um, how long have you been, has this been in, in gesture? In, Gestation, right, uh, the, right. the the pure systems. I thought it was a very very broad announcement. So how long have you been working on this? Yeah, it is a broad announcement. I, I think uh, uh, many of the pieces have been in the works for three or four years, on both the hardware side with uh, a whole new set of hardware components that we've built, um, and on the software side with some of the work we've been doing around cloud management. Um, around this idea of patterns and pattern-based deployment, um, three or four years. Uh, the actual kind of pure app system and pure flex system uh, final integration has been kind of the last year and a half or so, but a long investment over time to right. really get us to the point that we're at. So uh, there have been a, a number of uh, announcements by other vendors. Uh, the, yeah. There's the VBlock from VCE, and there's uh, FlexPods from yeah. uh, NetApp and, and Cisco, and, and, and uh, there have been people in this marketplace, the ISV, uh, the, not the ISVs, the integration integrators have been putting together systems of this sure. sort. Sure. So um, what is it in the marketplace that's been behind this investment? Uh, in integrated systems in uh, yeah I, I think there's a number of things that are kind of motivating people in this space I mean at the end of the day IT is complicated it's hard for people to put together it takes them a long time I mean I always kind of use this analogy of, of uh, IT today is like you know you're gonna custom build a house with an architect right and you go hire an architect and you uh, you build some plans and then you uh, hire a contractor and you custom build all the pieces that's kind of how we run IT today but um, that's great if, you know, in the sense that you get exactly what you want, uh, but it's time consuming and expensive and it takes a really long time for people to put all these pieces together. And I think this trend you're seeing around kind of converged or integrated systems is really a recognition that to get to the next level of efficiency and optimization and cost savings in IT is going to require us to start breaking down the traditional silos and building systems that are integrated together from the beginning. Um, you know, you see our, some of our competitors are going down that space, um, and certainly with pure systems, um, at both the kind of infrastructure levels and up at the kind of middleware and application levels, we've tried to say, okay, well, how do we actually start to pull some of these pieces together uh, and deliver you an integrated system? I mean, there's no way you could get a four-hour setup like I showed in that video uh, if your job was to put all the pieces together yourself. So what's the trade-off between best of breed? Mm. You know, uh, you have a lot of storage in IBM. You've got the V7000, you've got the XIV, you've got all these different storages. How, how do you trade off best of breed for a particular environment, uh, they're all sure. good products and they all have uh, their, their spaces, uh, against uh, simplicity. Well, and, and you're obviously spending more money if, you, if, you, if it doesn't fit exactly your requirements. So what, what's the trade-off between those and how, how can you uh, uh, yeah, so, navigate so, that? So I think that's why we, when we talk about this, we talk about a family of systems. And, and the reason that it's a, a family of systems is that different members of that family are optimized around different workloads and different scenarios. And so I think the way we balance that best of breed versus integration 
uh, tension that exists is by having a clear understanding of what kind of workload a given system is designed to run. So you look at um, you look at Pure Flex, which is designed to be integrated at the infrastructure level, but quite flexible, frankly, because you can run a whole variety of different workloads on it. You look at Pure Application, and we said, look, the, while you can run any kind of application on it you want, we kind of optimized the design around web and database workloads. And we said, okay, if I was running a mix of web and database, what kind of compute and storage and network would I want to run that kind of workload well? So we're able to kind of make some good choices by having a clear understanding of what kind of workload the system's trying to run and therefore pick the appropriate configurations for that kind of work. So is the idea then to take maybe 80% of the workloads that are operating in an environment and put them on highly optimized, easy to implement sort of solutions and then spend the other 20% on these yeah. highly customizable sorts of... A absolutely, absolutely. And I think you look at a lot of our customers and what they really wind up doing is they come up with a process for deploying applications. They tend to design that process around their hardest, most complicated applications, and then they apply that process to everything. And then they step back one day and go, it's really expensive and time consuming for me to deploy new applications. And a system like a pure application system allows you exactly to do that kind of 80-20 that says, the bulk of your apps will run great with the decisions that we've made, with the pre-integrated patterns that we have. And you might then wind up with you know, the top 10% that it's worth the effort to do a custom system design, but you're only doing it now for that, that upper tier and not trying to do it for anything. So um, again, coming back to the different philosophies and, and the business case for them, um, a single SKU, which I, mm -hmm. which is the, the, the system, yeah. uh, um, flex system, right. single SKU has a huge advantage in terms of simplicity or right. maintenance and things yep. like that. And and the the uh, more flexible apps then obviously are multiple SKUs. Right. Um, what's the trade-off in terms of of, of advising? Uh, customers, how would you trade off those two? What's the, the, the savings that you might get with a single SKU versus the flexibility that you get with the other approaches? Yeah, I mean, from again... A cost per, well, from, it, a, from, a, from a line cost point of view. Yeah, I mean, I think if you look at what we've done with the single SKU, uh, it's a very um, attractively priced set of capabilities. If you really look at the full stack of infrastructure plus management and middleware all combined together, it's certainly much more cost effective than buying all the individual pieces. Okay. And that's just acquisition cost. If you try to then factor in the labor associated with putting all that together, um, you know, there's no comparison. So give me a figure. Uh, um, I mean, I think order of magnitude, you're talking, um, you know, four to five X um, cheaper setup. Right, right. The total system kind of um, of uh, complex that you're putting together. So over a three-year period, what percentage of the uh, cost would that uh, reflect? Yeah, I mean we've done some interesting. It's hard to, to answer directly in the sense that you know we've done some interesting things. Like for example, with Pure Application, we've included uh, WebSphere and DB2 middleware as part of the of the system itself. Uh, in a kind of unlimited use on the rack kind of model. So a little bit different than our traditional licensing model. Mm. Uh, which allows a very different dynamic for the customer about how they deploy those types of applications and they can have much more freedom. You know, there's a lot of customers who frankly uh, spend a lot of time optimizing their environment around software license costs. <laughs> and, and trying to, they change how they deploy applications, of course, to minimize software Absolutely. license cost. And, yeah, yeah. and you look at, at something like Pure App where a lot of that's included, then you, you kind of get this freedom to use the system much more deeply because you're not worrying about how do I optimize license costs for this set of middleware software that's included in the system. So it changes the dynamic. I mean, you can look at the acquisition costs, you can look at labor. I think the labor savings are pretty significant. But you also look at these changing dynamics around how the software's licensed and that really changes how people actually deploy when they use the systems. Uh, would that go as, uh, would you go as far uh, to say that you could make savings from Oracle uh, with this type of approach? Um, Does Oracle like have a, they have a renegotiation every now and again, don't they? So we certainly cool. have customers who have been looking at these systems as a place uh, to move workloads to that are Oracle-based customers today, partly driven out of licensing uh, concerns that they have around Oracle. Um, and we've done some things, like for example, the, the DB2 support within Pure Application System has an Oracle compatibility model. 
which will allow you to take an Oracle database and move it onto DB2 on Pure App without changing anything about the application. You don't have to change the SQL. It's compatible with the existing Oracle, PLSQL, and, and uh, application structures. And so you can kind of easily move the application onto Pure App, onto DB2. Uh, changes your DBA's job a little bit, of course. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Oracle DBA, Oracle DBA needs versus DB2 needs, DBA. This is a new title, right? Here. But, but you know, at the end of the day, the application is the hard part, right? And not having to change the application code. So, are you saying that an Oracle database administrator who's been trained up in Oracle database would be able to then, after migration? continue to manage without additional training on a DB2? No, I'm not Maybe. saying that. Okay. I think the DBA okay. job is different. Okay. Um, although we've certainly done things within the patterns to simplify uh, some of the administration around the database itself. Okay. Um, but what I'm saying is that that applications that a customer might have that are hosted on Oracle database today could move onto a DB2 hosted database on Pure App without having to be rewritten or changed. Yeah. Right? And therefore you have compatibility in the application layer, okay. making that more feasible. Clearly the DBA is going to have to learn some DB2 DBA yeah. skills. Yeah. Um, but, but the inhibitor a lot of times is really, uh, it's easier to train some new DBAs than it is to rewrite 50 applications that are yeah. averaging yeah. Oracle data. Well, that's, that's so that's a marvelous negotiation uh, opportunity sure, uh, sure. When, when the Oracle renegotiation is coming up, to have one of these around so that you could... Uh, Right, and then the flip side too. Yeah, that just set one on, on the old procurement guy's desk at least. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, the other thing um, that I think is is interesting in that space as well is that these systems are open. So, um, you also can run competitive software on the platform. Right? So, if you look at what we're doing uh, versus some of the competitors in the converged space, uh, especially uh, Oracle themselves with their Exa suite. They're very restrictive about kind of what you can run on those systems. And with Pure Systems, we've taken more of a, a, an attitude that said, uh, these are open systems that you can run a variety of software on. We've built a bunch of optimized content around IBM middleware. We've worked with our partners to build optimized content around their applications. And we've provided the tools to enable customers to build their own custom content that's optimized to run on the system. And that could include running Oracle Database on there, or running uh, you know, open source, or running other competitive software yeah. on there. I did some work recently on looking at Exadata and the, uh, the um, two things. First of all, comparing it with the best of breed storage. Mm -hmm. right. And there's a huge number, it, it really is not best of breed. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and also comparing the the to what it saves uh, mm -hmm. obviously which is goodness as a single skew um, but w what the added complexity it brings into the data center because now you've got a little island of computing right, right. Uh, which is sitting there so so could you expand a bit more on how you avoid that uh, here's an island of computing that needs to be done separately, and I need to get another island for development as well. Yeah, and yeah, another island silo for kind of another. Issue. You you can really easily get into that silo yeah, sure, mentality, sure. Um, and and really suffer because you don't have best of breed. Could you could you talk expand a bit on how you can sure. fit in with a data center? Yeah, you're right. That's a real challenge I think with these integrated systems is that because you're kind of crossing roles and crossing silos and technology domains that um, you run a risk of building this nicely integrated system that is an island within the data center, and that doesn't work um, for customers. And so we've tried in, in Pure Systems to strike a little bit of a balance. So if you look at what we've done with a lot of those systems, they, uh, you know, they have integrated monitoring, they have integrated um, you know, problem determination and eventing, but they also have plug points where you can hook them into the external data center. You plug into your external security infrastructure, plug into Network. your data yeah. center level monitoring, right. right? And what we've done is say, okay, well if you're using some of our stuff, like you're using Tivoli monitoring, for example, then we've made that as easy as we possibly can. Like, turn on external monitoring, tell me the IP address of your monitoring server. If you're using some third-party monitoring, then there's a little more steps involved, of course, to extend the system to know about that. But we've provided all of those kind of plug points and tools that you need to extend the system to allow it to integrate in with the external data center. So it's just a constant battle, really, to kind of strike this balance between being deeply integrated within the system and then reaching out into the data center. If you look at our patterns, for example, I showed this morning in, the, in my demo, I showed a couple of, uh, of examples of patterns. And the example I showed there was a kind of fully self-contained pattern, like everything ran on right. the rack. 
Right. But you know, the patterns yeah. that we have support the other model as well that says, well, maybe a piece of the app is running in the rack and talking to existing yeah. stuff that you have in the data center. And you can model those things in the pattern as well. So you can say, maybe I, I have my web application running a web so you're talking to Oracle database that I already have sitting in the network somewhere. And I can build a pattern that says, deploy my, my app, and here's the database I want you to use. And with that knowledge, I can configure the firewalls in the network to talk to that guy, and I can do all the client-side driver configuration and everything to allow you to, to talk to that database. So we've tried to recognize both sides, the connect to existing and the create new right. side of things. Right. There, the, uh, one of the things you talked about is sort of crossing lines within the IT department. So mm -hmm. there may be silos for networking, silos for storage, mm -hmm. silos for compute, silos, silos for applications, and they have their separate budgets too. Mm -hmm. yes. right? um, and so your approach requires to sort of some consolidation across those. Is, and, you, and a reorganization and as well. Make, yeah, um, may have to reorganize, they have to reorganize some portion of it. Because you, you, know, you previously got your DBA as separate from your yep. um, system, yep. separate from your storage, and now yeah. you're integrating and that. Off. may not. Is that a major friction? Yeah. Is it? it is a friction, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's also part of what we're trying to get changed with these right. systems. So it's like a necessary <laughs> change. Yeah. And you know the reality is, I think most customers' organizations are organized around how technology was 10 years ago, right? Right, and so it's going to have to evolve. The trick is, how do we get you to evolve to a new model and allow you to do it incrementally in steps along the way? And so what we've tried to do in in some of our peer systems is, all those people have a role still. The network guy has a role, and the OS level guy has a role, and the virtualization guy still has a role, but the way they execute their role is different. So instead of you know, uh, passing a work item through a bunch of different teams to have them manually set up systems or configure the network or set up storage, um, they collaborate on the definition of a pattern, and that pattern captures all of that institutional knowledge, all of those standards and standard configurations in the pattern. So the, the network guy or the OS guy will come along and provide the base OS image. And the network guy will come along and validate the network configuration, right? And once they've defined the pattern, then it kind of goes into the catalog and people can have self-service access to right. it with some assurance that when the thing deploys, it'll be set up in the right way. So yeah, of course, of course, if you don't want to fight the organizational battles, you can always outsource your IT and your service <laughs> providers are, sure. and the service providers seem to be embracing this model because it's a, a more cost-effective way yeah. for yeah, them sure. to deploy. If you outsource, so. they, you know, they have to yeah. uh, maximize budgets, their profit margin, right? Right, and their, and their budgets get quickly consolidated there. Sure, so absolutely. Jason, I appreciate you joining us today. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm, I, uh, I'm glad to have you here, and uh, uh, we'll uh, look forward to seeing more progress. Uh, Thank you. With uh, Pure Systems, uh, I'm John MacArthur, uh, president of Walden Technology Partners here on SiliconANGLE TV at IBM Storage Edge 2012. We'll be right back after a short break.